You're listening to Errol Parker and Clancy Overall, editors of the Batuta Advocate on Desert Rock FM. Welcome back to the Batuta Advocate radio show, recording live out of Budgie Smuggler Studios here in downtown Batuta, the old city district. And this week, it's a change of pace. We've been interviewing a lot of different people as, as the year kind of begins. We had Father John Owen from Wayside Chapel, Tana Douglas, uh, the world's first female roadie. So this isn't actually that much of a change of pace from <laughs> Kings. When you think about it. I mean, yeah. everyone that we've interviewed in the last few weeks started their career in King's Cross, and we're going to keep it that way. Today's guests, they did the same. The Rubens, Sam and Elliot, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you for having us. Now, I was going to introduce you as uh, Western Sydney's favourite musical export, but things have changed since the last time we spoke, and you aren't Samoan drill. Oh, who's rappers. that then? Uh, one four. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. Would it be fair to say you boys are from the horse riding part of Western Sydney? I don't know where that is. I think, that, isn't the horse riding part like where all the, the McMansions are yeah. out in the hills somewhere? I thought it was more Camden, James Tedesco kind of country. Yeah, I mean, I've never ridden a horse. <laughs> I know there's a nice airport out there. <laughs> Soon to be. Where you can learn to fly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Camden Airport's the best airport ever. Yeah. I don't know why they're trying to replace that. <laughs> How are things, guys? You've been recording out in Camden in a World War II bunker. Is that is yeah, that yeah. is that real? It's a real thing, man. It was a communications bunker in the war. I don't know how much communicating it did, but it was um, it was there, and it was um, it's it's sick. It's like a legitimate, semi-submerged, enormous concrete structure, kind of perfect for a studio. Yeah, it's mad. So, what makes it perfect for a studio? Like acoustics or or something else? Terrible acoustics. So yeah, it's not perfect, perfect. in that respect, yeah. but it's perfect because it is a space that we're allowed to make music in. But yeah, pretty much every in every other way, it's, yeah. it's really bad. It's like a, it's a it's, if you imagine like a, a beer can, yeah, cut in half, and then placed on the ground, that would be the shape of it. So it's just a, it's it's very echoey. But that's the new sound you're going for, right? Yeah, echo echo is in. Echo is back, baby. Yeah, <laughs> never left. Never left. Now, new album, O two O two. Is yeah. there any uh, is there any kind of cryptic terminology that we're, we're we're seeing in this name it's uh it's very cryptic it's it's 2020 backwards oh um, okay <laughs> sorry to blow your mind in the morning <laughs> yeah. but yeah it's uh it, we wanted to um acknowledge the year that was yeah. you know and not just you know just leave it because it was so fucking weird and so we just wanted to have 2020 backwards as the year that was fucked up and upside down you know? So what was it like for you? I, I hate to use the word unprecedented, but it, it was a year that was unprecedented <laughs> in what it did to not only us, but all people around the world. What did it look like for you? Yeah, I mean, just the same as most of us. I think we just didn't know what to do with ourselves. We tried to keep busy doing live streaming sh- shit. And uh, I mean, we wrote this album. It was bad timing, really, because... We, uh, we wrote the album before COVID and we'd almost finished when it all hit. So we had like two songs left to go. So then we finished the album um, as, as it was all sort of kicking off and then had nothing to do for the rest of the year. So it was interesting. And I built a deck at my house. Yeah, it stands to this day. <laughs> so you, I mean, it could have been more unlucky that you had finished the album and dropped it in February 2020. That could have been worse. Yes, yeah. actually, that would, that would be, and also to be honest with you, I'm glad we wrote us wrote an album and wrote the lyrics to that album and everything uh, before COVID because I think it would be a really shitty thing to have to try and make music during that. Yeah. Like if you if that was your album cycle and you were that you, you had to write an album last year, it would I don't know, man. It's just like do people want you to write about what's going on? Yeah. Do they not? I don't yeah. think they do. But I don't I don't, I'm they interested do. to see what music comes out this year. From the people that wrote it last year yeah it's gonna, yeah it's oh, it, really terrible there's not much escapism in that you've just spent a year locked down and now your favorite bands just dropped an album about being locked down i mean it's uh, yeah yeah i reckon we're gonna move on <laughs> and then you've got all those bands up in queensland who uh you know can't really complain about much you know there was just that year <laughs> when they couldn't go to melbourne <laughs> <laughs> or all those people over in Perth, you know it's just like oh you know 
guess COVID. I was over in Perth for a, for, for a bit of for a bit of COVID because uh, my wife's family from there, yeah. and I spent like a few months there. And people that I talked to there were like, "It's like the media had made out like the East was it was like living in America, and it was just yeah. every there was cases everywhere." And it's, mm-hmm. and and I was like, "No, it's it's fine. We're <laughs> we're going to the pub. Like it's all alright." And they were like, "Really?" Queensland's the same. They don't they don't realize it. And Queens and 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 WA is the same as Queenslanders. They don't want to realize it. It's like we're we're so content. Not many of us are stuck on the other side of the border. Some are, but not many. So yeah. suck shit to them. We're gonna lock it down and keep going to play bingo. <laughs> <laughs> but it, you know, you must have got lucky getting over there when you did because it has been pretty difficult to get to Perth and um, I guess they've had to kind of just rely on their own music scene. As has Queensland. Queensland's basically got one band. That's Shepherd. So they've had a few shows. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure the pond, the pond and Tame Boys, um, were really keeping it going there. Yeah, um, they, well, they, yeah Pond and Tame and Parlour were doing were doing pub gigs just to get everyone through in WA. I think that's it's been a while since I've been doing that. The state. <laughs> yeah. What does 2021 look like? Does it look like you're going to be able to get a few? shows in is festivals are they coming back what's we don't know anything about splendor yet but you know the, the, oh the man i don't know i want to give it a crack yeah i think I, I if it's not splendor and stuff i think there's gonna be a few independent things that pop up here and there i think those giant ones i, I don't know if they can pull that off and i and i i, I mean i'm pretty sure tyler the creator isn't gonna be flying into the country this year um so <laughs> <laughs> we'll see for, for but, four um, hours <laughs> yeah <laughs> a bit risky yeah but um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, I hope so. Like, I, we're playing shows. Like, we got our tour still going. Like, we might have to like adapt on the fly, you know, if borders close and stuff. But like, we're going to be putting on this next tour. If it has to be seated and we have to do two shows instead of one, that's what we'll do. Like, yeah. that's 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 the plan, really. But yeah, man, I don't know. Like, I, from from the my talks with people within the industry and the book, booking booking agents and all that, it seems like they're pretty excited for the back half of this year. Yeah, I think I think the idea is you know they'll do you'll have your on your on your phone you'll have the app that sh- that shows that you've you've had the uh, the vaccination and if you want to go into the gig you have to prove that at the door mm-hmm. and then everyone in there will be vaccinated and I guess that's one way through for now you know yeah 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 I mean it, you just do need to have a touch and go kind of um, template too you know like it, similar to what rugby league has done like oh if there's a hiccup in this city we're going to delay it you know it's it's going to delay it by five days, but it's going to happen. And like you people give a and shit. And all the fans are still at when it actually does happen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, like they can complain. It's like you didn't have anything else on in five days, so just go to the gig then. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> 100%. So where, where are you all at? I mean, uh, Sam, you're a family man now. Yeah. Has the band followed you into that into that world, or have you got like – do you have a few bachelors that are kind of, you know – had a different 2020 to you uh well it was scotty our drummer he, he's um he's having he's expecting a baby about now yep. um right now and uh elliot you're a bachelor bro mm. bra bra bachelor bra yeah right yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's it's not like a huge difference on yeah. tour between yeah. like the uh the family men and the bachelors yeah yeah, yeah. not that the family men are being like the bachelors but more than the bachelors are sensible. They're just like us. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, yeah. <laughs> like us family, man. Okay, yeah, I gotcha. <laughs> but, you know, it, it would have been, um, I guess, at what point were you guys going back to the bunker last year? Like, you know, because that's a bit of sanity. After that six-week mandatory nationwide lockdown, we had to eventually come back to the Batuta Advocate newsroom because everyone was going a bit mad at home. Sorry, Melbourne, you didn't get that luxury of being able to decide when to go back <laughs> yeah. to work. But... But thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> Brave soldiers. Yeah, I know. They did it for yeah. us. You guys have done very well with uh with, with regional touring as well. What do you think that is? That we do it. Yeah. I d I, I don't know. I, I mean I, I don't know if our music seems to cross over a little bit and, and people out out here, we're in Tamworth right now like it but i i think it's honestly just that we make the effort to come and we love it like it's not it's not like we're doing it's not a charity like yeah. this is the shit that we love to do like it's fun man like we get in the van with our mates and we're in the van for four or five hours a day but we stop at the most remote pub we can find and have lunch and have some beers and it's just like it's it's, it's an awesome holiday and it, it's, it's like you know how everyone since covid has been like going out to like you know remote regional places like it's just like the new thing domestic tourism um, yeah 
<laughs> yeah, domestic tourism is sort of going inland and just you know exploring. That's what we do on tour. Yeah, you get to play a show. We've been end. doing it for years, and it's and it's and it's sick. So um, I just think that people that people are just psyched that you've made the effort to come. And yeah. like last night in um in Tamworth, like they were so like they went off. They were seated. It was in a huge, huge Tamworth Town Hall kind of thing, and it was only three hundred people seated. But like. It was just like the biggest vibe. Yeah, that's probably because you know shows are back and COVID and blah blah blah. But yeah, I don't know. I, I just feel like there's a there's a there's an appreciation there that you don't get when you're in a major city. Do you guys ever dabble with a little bit of like a you know maybe play to the crowd? You're in Tamworth. You might throw in a Troy Cassidy cover or something like that. Slim Dusty. <laughs> I couldn't. I, I, I'm sorry, everyone, but I couldn't harm a song. I couldn't harm a <laughs> Troy Cassidy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see that you're off to Dubbo tonight, so. You might be able to uh, do a, a, thirst, a thirsty Merc cover because I know that the drummer from Thirsty Merc's from Dubbo. So, oh. <laughs> all those people in Dubbo would really appreciate that, I reckon. Yeah, and I know you've always been, <laughs> always been itching for that opportunity too. Yeah. Lord, you have to dip your hand. <laughs> yeah, come on, give it to us. <laughs> Bit of Bondi rescue. You yeah, guys got to. I want to know. I want to know whether they, um, you know, continual kind of payment for the. The um the Bondi, Bondi rescue, rescue thing. They yes, do. they, just they sort do. Of they do. Every oh, summer, five hundred bucks. Do they? They do. Every summer is a brand new Porsche, and it isn't that. It's it's here, and they make the big bucks in England because it's fucking huge in England. That show, mm. Mm. so it gets abs- wow. absolutely pumped there, and they get paid in pounds back here. So it's times two. So, <laughs> no, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean that's and that, man, they've said that's what they did. They've they've admitted that they wrote a song with all of the commercial checkpoints yeah. to get themselves into the position they're in now. Yeah, so you could buy the thirstiest so Merc. <laughs> 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 like like a V twelve right, no flying down the highway. Yeah, gurgling up a, that ninety eight octane. I mean, going to Dubbo tonight, you guys are going to have to dip your hands in in some uh, cement and then dip it into some broken glass. It gets a bit rough in some of these towns. How does that um How does that go for you? Well, you you could go to the Amaru tonight in Dubbo afterwards and do the What's karaoke that? there. Oh, it's a pub there in Dubbo. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, karaoke. That's yeah. our album release date too, and the karaoke on that that would be. We could go and do our album back to, from start to finish. Yeah, really love ourselves. Yeah, I'd hate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, and I guess it, it's it's. I mean, it's not that rough. Like our fans are real, like good. I mean, there's there's punch ons in the crowd sometimes, but not really in this kind of crowd. I think this because of the shows we're doing, it deters the shoey yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah you're right. not going to go and sit in, a, in, a, in you know, Tamworth Memorial Town Hall and do a shoey and not be allowed to stand up. It's yeah. just like, it's a bit more wholesome and there's there's kids in the audience, it's all ages. So yeah. I think like these COVID kind of gigs keeps us pretty safe. Um, it, isn't that disgraceful yeah. that, our, that, that we have people who will hand their puffy DC sneaker full of mid-strength beer to like an international artist? And ask them to drink out of it, like, "Hey, Frank Ocean, drink this." <laughs> <laughs> or in welcome the Formula One. To hey, welcome to our <laughs> how Daniel Ricardo's like, like, here you go, man from Germany is very clean cut and very serious. Have a beer out of a shoe, and he's like, "No." Yeah, I just there couldn't be more of a stark contrast between that and a Formula One drive, a traditional Formula One drive. Yeah. No, no, yeah, it's not very Monaco, is it? Not very Monaco <laughs> behavior. Now, what was the sound of this album prior to lockdown? Obviously, you said it was a lot of it was was written and and kind of done before this historical event that changed the course of history. What were you guys thinking of and listening to and inspired by as you kind of came into this 0202? Uh, we, we weren't listening. Like we were just talking about it, Elliot and I, we weren't listening to music almost at all at the time. Mm-hmm. Like we this time when we went into writing mode, it was just making demos, trying to make them sound sick and listening to podcasts. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. We didn't plan on it, but we just both mm-hmm. realized that that's what we'd been doing. Um, so Maybe we weren't influenced so much on this one as we had been on past records. I know that I, looking back, I know that we were definitely bigger fans of things back on, say, our second record. And you can hear that in the music, like whatever we were listening to at the time. But yeah, we, we, we weren't really listening to the music. So yeah. I think as well, when you're in the studio working on music and that's the job you're doing all day, 
when you get home, you just don't want to listen to music anymore because you'll be thinking about the snare sound or you'll be thinking about, I don't know, just... It was also, we were, and, we were producing this ourselves. So it, like, yeah. it took up a lot more of our brain space yeah, trying to well. like, we weren't going to fuck it up, you know? Um, whereas like when you have producers, you can just write a demo, bring it in and they're going to run the show. You're still going to play all your instruments and stuff, but you know that it's going to get there because that's their job to produce from start yeah. to finish. But we, we, we had that on ourselves. So like there was a bit more stress there, but actually it wasn't really stressful. It was fucking mad. It was, it, was, it, was, <laughs> it was mad once we figured out that we could do it. Yeah. I like, think it was a risk at first. And then like we did the first track and we realized that people really responded to it. And so they were like, all right, we can back ourselves. And why did you decide to do that? Well, we, it, wasn't, it wasn't really a decision we made at any point really. We were writing and we, there was no real deadline. We just released the, the album before and we had a bunch of demos and, and we just wanted to release a song just to sort of tide fans over between records and, 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 and give, give ourselves a bit of breathing space and, and go and work on the album. That song was Live In Life. And um, we went into the bunker and because it was a song that we weren't like, it, it wasn't like we were going to make a huge effort to promote it. It was just going to be a song to record ourselves and chuck it out. We didn't get a producer involved and we just did it ourselves. And um, that song without us really expecting it is probably going to be our most streamed song ever. Yeah. So it, it landed and, um, and then we're like, Oh shit, like we did that ourselves. Maybe we can, you know, do that. And then we, we didn't decide at that point that we we're going to produce the whole album ourselves. We just went in, you know, when we had a couple of days off too, we'd just go in and, and choose a demo and just make it because we have the studio there and Will's there and he's engineering it. And we're just like, it's just fun. So we, we kind of just found ourselves a few songs deep, realizing that this is the album, this is how it's going. Yeah. You know, yeah. it was it was a nice way to do it. I think it would have. I don't think we would have necessarily decided at the start like, hey, we're going to produce this whole album ourselves. Yeah. It, I think that would have been daunting, but yeah. It just kind of happened that way. Yeah. How typical is it in Australian music for a band to produce their own album? I think it's becoming more and more common. I think the fact that people can, you have so much technology just on your laptop. You don't have to be in a big expensive studio. Like some kid in his bedroom in high school can make something and then get on the radio. Yeah. I think like, yeah, people are becoming more and more open to the fact that like good music doesn't have to happen in some big commercial space. It can just happen in your bedroom on your laptop, which I think is cool. It's yeah. more accessible to everyone. Yeah. I give massive props to like a band on their first or second record who self-produced because like it's hard and like, I think we've only we're only able to do it now because we've worked with big producers mm -hmm. on three records previously, and we've learned from them. But um, yeah, it's crazy if you can go out and do it on, on like just be a self-produced sort of internal like machine. That's that's fucking that's mental. Not to talk, um, you know, the finances of your industry, but that would be a better that'd be a better thing for you guys too if you'd produced it and then it becomes your most streamed song ever. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean, if you're not giving points away left, right, and center, it's it's like that's a good thing too. I mean, like that. That's not why why we did it for, mm. for financial reasons. But I mean, yeah. It, I mean, it would it saved us money. Like last last time, we brought out two dudes from America and we put them up and we spent months in the bunker yeah. in Camden and it was fucking sick. And I would I, no regrets there. We had a great time and and, and it's we got a good result. But um, yeah. Obviously, it's 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 cheaper to do it yourself. Yeah. Way cheaper. And how does it feel now? You know, ten years in the game to just get a song through that that just, you know, as you said, most stream song you've ever done kind of comes through the gates 10 years in. Oh, man, yeah. And when I think about it like that, it's 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 crazy. Yeah. Because after, like, you know, Hoops, Hottest 100, it's kind of like, what do we do now? Like, yeah. are we going to yeah. get that feeling again? And um, we'll never have that feeling again. But um, just the fact, just looking at stats like that, where, where we just released a song that we didn't even think was that good and it's, it's going to surpass Hoops, I think, probably it's that's yeah it's a really really nice feeling and yeah i think like last year being off it's like i'm sure for all artists it's the same but it's it's given us a huge appreciation for all the little things that we in, in our career like how, how just how much fun we have and how, how good our jobs are and i honestly feel like rejuvenated i think maybe i don't know if i got jaded or just tired but and i didn't know it at the time but i think like taking a year off i just feel like it's it's our first tour and it's her first album and like it just makes me feel like we got another 10 years and it's easy you know yeah why why is it do you think that bands can last so long nowadays i mean when you look at when you guys made hottest 100 2016 and you look at when you guys started that timeline was probably as long as the beatles were ever together you know what i mean <laughs> yeah like the, the beatles know, are such an institution 
but they were only together yeah. eight years, you know, from start to very bitter finish. Why that was is pretty it... good, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I don't know. I mean, they had a few good songs. I don't, I don't know. Um, I, 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 I have no idea mm. why bands stick around. I, it feels like there was an era maybe of artists around when we came out and they all seem to be killing it. And I feel like there's a lot of Triple J listeners that loved that era mm -hmm. and are sort of sticking with it. And like, you know, there's like, that's, you know, it was Flume, it was Chet Faker, it was Tame Impala. And there's a lot of, I, I just feel like we were part of a really lucky era of music where we're not lucky because we're the poorest artists of all time, mm. but um, <laughs> it would have been great to be 20 years ago. But yeah, um, yeah. 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 yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, people stuff. are holding on to that era with Triple J, you know? <laughs> yeah. Well, it could be why, you know, the Beatles only had to do eight years because they, there's a lot more money in vinyl <laughs> than I guess there is in uh, yeah. streaming. And Tidal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they were probably smart in that they just did it and got out, yeah, made yeah. the money yeah. and got the money out of it. Do you think you guys, but do you think there is a level of professionality nowadays too that even like Chisel didn't, that era, that era certainly didn't, fucking behave you know well you didn't have to back then because yeah. of because of how much money everyone had you know yeah. you just do what you wanted like, whereas now if you're not gonna if you're not gonna be professional it's gonna be really really hard to continue being a band so do you, like do you reckon that's the main reason anyway, do you reckon that's the main reason everyone's got to keep working yeah well the kid like even like i look at our era compared to like the kids now and the kids now have their heads screwed on even more than we did mm. like they're like like you, you talk to these young artists and they're completely across all the technical side of things all all the planning all the like they they run their businesses and they they know everything that's going on. It's like I think you have to to survive. Yeah. And it's like these like hungry, crazy kids. And, 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 hungry. and, and a lot of them are going independent or doing something crazy from the very start and not signing. You know, almost like they're almost kind of doing you know the hip hop thing where it's just like maybe they'll let someone help them distribute, but other than that, it's just. We kind of hold the keys to the kingdom as well, which which sounds like a lot for a twenty year old to be thinking about. Yeah, and it's not it's not rock and roll, is it? No, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's not why we do it, you yeah. know. But um, it just seems like you, you get, a lot of people have to, you know, if they're going to get through and make a living. I mean, there's also you could just busk for a while and then hope that whoever the manager of Tones and Iron, the other one, picks you up. G flip. That's the, <laughs> G flip, you know, like like that's a real thing as well. Like <laughs> some people are just busting and then making millions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, it's um, uh, you know, as we just kind of, as we kind of just touched on, you guys, ten years in, you've just dropped one of your biggest songs ever. That could happen again in ten years. I mean, you've bleached your hair, but that's about as erratic as things are. I think, like you're not. <laughs> yeah, you're not gonna, yeah. you're not going to try and do a solo Michael Hutchins thing where you you know where you turn into Nick Cave, but it's um it looks like the Rubens are here to stay, so uh, we look forward What's to it, the thing, seeing you. The, sorry, the only thing I was going to say is like I like that I like the fact that we could be ten years down like from here and still the, the way the music industry is now, you could release a song if it's a fucking banger. Yeah, yeah. no one's going to care who you are, what you look like. Yeah. It's gonna. It's huge, yeah. you know. And I love that as a songwriter, you th there's that in our future, you know. And yeah. it, and it could happen any time, you know. You, uh, you could you could write a great great song at 40 years old and win a Grammy if it's a great song. Yeah, and, yeah. And that's it. There's no flavor of the month. There's no timeline. Oh, like uh, there's no there's no iron is hot really anymore for for musicians. No, no, not so much. No, because yeah, cool. you look at like Violent Soho could have been around 10 years before you guys really. Mm, they were. They They've were. been around. I think mm. they were around like fucking before the Olympics. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Mansfield Tavern. <laughs> but that, that that's the same thing. Like they're going to, you know, with their not next too album. Far off, 2004. Yeah. Their wow. next album is going to be, there's going to be kids that discover them that's... on the, on their next album. There'll be 19 year old fans. Yeah. Yeah. That, that it's crazy when you think about that as well. Like say someone who's old enough to come to an, an, an over 18 show now and just discovered us, they would have been eight years old when our first record came out. <laughs> so it's like, it is, you're constantly trying to like reach these people who are just sort of getting over listening to Taylor yeah. Swift on over or something yeah. and wanting to find something new and we can still be that band. Like yeah. it's crazy. Well, personally, I look forward to the K-pop influenced Ruben's album, which will be coming out in 2023. <laughs> 
<laughs> One for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> now, boys, we're going to let you go, but what song uh, should we finish with here? What 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 would you like us to put out through uh, the, the Tutor uh, Advocate radio show? We're going to have to speak to your management. But if we... the good people at Ivy League will let us, then... Uh... <laughs> Well, I don't know. Are we yeah, meant to be like promoting like a single or can we just say, hey, we like this song from the record? Do whatever you want. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah, let's put on Thank You. Okay. okay. Thank you. That was, uh, mm-hmm. this is produced by E Margin, I Margin, S Margin, and Zegless. And uh, yeah. Nice. Let's, uh, let's let it rip. Thanks for joining us, gents. And Baldwin. And Baldwin. Right. Oh, yeah, and Baldwin. I saw Baldwin there too. Scott Baldwin. <laughs> <laughs> And He'll be listening to this, man. You've got to get him in here. He loves you guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks, boys. We'll have to catch you at one of your gigs when you come out to the Diamantina Shire. Oh, yeah. My yeah, nephew's well. band's looking, you know, for a few gigs. Maybe he can open for you. <laughs> Ivan and the Malats. Oh. Batuta's favourite. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> that was a bit rough, actually. These boys aren't too far from there. <laughs> We're yeah. close, man. That hit really home. Low. That hit home. <laughs> yeah. Good on you, Clancy. Thank you for listening to the Batuta Advocate Radio Show. We've just been speaking to the Rubens, and we're going to leave you with the first single of their new album. It's titled Masterpiece. Forty stories up, it's night and day. Never met, but I could guess your name. Said you reminded me of home, and all of that time we barely spoke. So lessons learned can quickly be erased. Pouring forties down the kitchen sink All your talking, I can't hear me think Push and pull and seize me on the brink If it's all or nothing, let's break off these links All of the best guys made you whole All of the rest I'll never know If this is a test, I'll take my leave And I'm on the run But now that I'm on the run Got it wrong, really, all along You were just a masterpiece Masterpiece Chewing on Valium The jet is taking off I can feel the rust spreading It's a killer disease Killer disease To say it would hurt too much So I boil it down Bottle it up and drink it like a remedy No good for me And now that I'm on the run I couldn't let you in Now there's a lot to tell you So listen I was keeping you out Cause I've been hurt before Becoming a coward And I hate myself more I'm not proud Looking back now I had to run Now that I'm on the run Think I got it wrong Really all along You were just a masterpiece Masterpiece Chewing on Valley Young Taking off, I can feel the rot spreading. It's a killer disease, killer disease. To say it would hurt too much, so I boil it down, bottle it up, and drink it like a remedy. No good for me. And now that I'm on the run, no, I got it wrong. Really, all along you were just a masterpiece, a masterpiece. So with or without me, still felt you were drowning. With so many options. Then I'm on the run Think I got it wrong really all along You were just a masterpiece Masterpiece Chewing on valley um, The jet is taking off I can feel the rot spreading It's a killer disease Killer disease Say it will hurt to mine